Okay. Hey, man, take one right there. <laughs> Back when COVID was going on and we were taping the services, I'd come over here and preach. And it's so awkward. Not another soul, human being, in the auditorium. And it's just me and that camera and everything. It was so odd, me talking to that camera and everything. And so I, I'm a little bit leery about cameras anyway. And so uh, uh, I appreciate, appreciate everybody being here. And I was going somewhere that, and I forgot, so I might as well just move on right now. <laughs> All right. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 1. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, God's Word. Amen. Yeah. Jesus Christ said, Man shall not live by bread alone, yeah. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I understand when you're reading the Scriptures, in particular the Old Testament, it can be difficult reading. Uh, some of the names are, are difficult to pronounce. And uh, it's dealing with the Jewish people, God's earthly chosen people, and it makes for difficult reading. But there's a lot of things that we read about in the Old Testament that are a foreshadow or a type of Christ that we see revealed in the New Testament. And so there are some of my pastor friends, they never preach out of the Old Testament. They feel like it's unnecessary. Well, I'm going to stand on what Jesus said. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so I think the Old Testament scriptures are just as vital as the New Testament. And so, uh, uh, beloved, uh, uh, we can glean a lot of truths from the Old Testament and from their examples. We can learn from their examples in the Old Testament. And so, anyway, with that being said, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, praying God peace for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, Whereof you heard before in the word of truth, uh, the word of truth of the gospel, which is coming to you as it is in all the world, and bring it forth fruit, as it doth also in you since the day you heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Uh, let's ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful. Uh, to be here this evening, dear God. We're thankful for the breath of life and health you've given us to enjoy creation, to enjoy life today. And Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for your word and for the truth and instruction that we receive from thy word. And Lord, we are thankful for the word of truth. Lord, we're thankful for uh, believing the word of truth and hearing the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And Father, as you've told us from your word, uh, we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that you give us, Heavenly Father. And so, Father, may we realize as a child of God the importance your word has in our lives, uh, that we need to hide your word in our heart, and we need to obey your word as you give it to us, Heavenly Father. And, Lord, I ask and pray that you help me as I preach. Uh, Father, you know the pain in my chest right now that I'm dealing with, Lord. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd strengthen my voice, take away this pain and discomfort in my in my chest, in my lungs, so that I'll be able to preach your word tonight. And Father, I pray that if there's one here or one that's watching this video that has never trusted thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you convict their heart of sin and judgment to come and that you draw them into yourself, dear Lord, that they be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, I pray for David. Father, you know what's going on in his heart right now. Uh, Father, we want to help him. Uh, Father, I pray that you deal with his heart accordingly and draw him into yourself, dear Lord, that he not interested in worldly things, but he's concerned about his soul and wants to be saved and wants to turn his life over to thee. And so, Father, I pray for him, the spiritual needs, physical needs that he has. Uh, Father, I commit this situation unto you. Uh, Father, I went back and forth about what you'd have me to do, dear Lord, and at this moment, I just give him to you, dear God. And I pray that you do the work in his heart and life. I may not understand it, but Father, I'm going to trust you by faith. And Lord, at the end of the day, you've told us that your ways are higher than our ways. 
your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so, Father, I don't know what you would have us to do. But, Father, whatever we do, we want you to be glorified, Heavenly Father. And so, Lord, I pray now that you bless in the remainder of the service. Have your will and way. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. amen. Notice here in our text, again, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and a lot of the Pauline epistles, that's one of the very first things that the apostle Paul addresses is his call of God. Now you've got to remember uh, the apostle Paul, before he came, became the apostle Paul, he was known as Saul of Tarsus. And beloved, his, his ministry, if you will, uh, he studied the law, he was very learned in the law, and he persecuted the early churches. He persecuted the early churches. Had Christians jailed, had them sentenced to their death. Can you imagine somebody like that today that makes a mockery of God's word, uh, is against the things of God, and then they walk into the church building one day, say that they're saved, and that their life has been changed. Well, that's exactly what happened with the Apostle Paul. People were scared of him. And how many people do we know today make a profession of faith, say that they're born again, and over a period of time, it's obvious that there's not been a change in their life. Uh, they're not brokenhearted over their sin. Uh, they truly didn't get born again. They just made that profession uh, because it may have been advantageous for them at that time to say that. And so we see here the Apostle Paul in his epistles, he's reassuring the saints. He's telling other people, I'm not the same guy. God has saved me, he's cleansed me, and he's called me to be a light to the Gentiles. Amen. Now we know the Apostle Paul had a great zeal and love for his Jewish brethren. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But God called him to be the light to the Gentiles. And so yes, he preached to the Jew, he preached to the Gentile. And he even confronted Peter because Peter around certain people was acting one way and then around another group of people he began to act another way. And that disturbed Paul. And he confronted him to his face because of his two-sidedness, if you will. And so uh, we see this here, this assurance of his calling that God has dealt with his heart and that I have been called of God. Don't think about the old man that persecuted Christians, had you jailed. No, I've changed. I've been born again. And now I'm preaching the very gospel of Christ, which I once before persecuted. And beloved, God's able to do that. God's able to do that. And so, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace unto you and peace from God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And about every Pauline epistle, he addresses grace and peace and love to the people he's writing the epistle to. The book of the Galatians is about the only one that we see a little bit of deviation from that. And that's because the people at Galatia uh, had fallen into apostasy, if you will. And the Apostle Paul went and addressed that literally from about the second or third verse forward. And so anyway, uh, he always has a peaceful salutation for the believers. He also gives thanks. Notice here verse 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here it is. Pray without ceasing. Praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. Notice here verses 5 and 6. And this is our text that I want to use in regarding uh, to the effectiveness, effectiveness of God's word. Notice here verses 5 and 6. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Here it is. Where have you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel? I believe it's been said, you are begotten by the word of God. I believe it, you need to hear the gospel message. Amen. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, it was in the prayer room service uh, uh, tonight. One of the brethren was talking about a preacher who was preaching against pornography. And uh, he went into great detail about the industry, which almost led you to believe he knew a little bit firsthand about dealing with that topic. Maybe he's been involved with it because he knows so much. Uh, beloved, at the end of the day, you can tell what's important in someone's heart by what comes out of their mouth. That's 
Yeah. That's Amen. true. Because what comes out of your mouth yeah. is a revelation of the heart. That's yeah. so true. And so, uh, beloved, uh, yeah. uh, be careful what you talk about because you can't be telling on yourself. That's right. Uh, beloved, a lot of times when all people talk about is UT and UT sports, and listen, I'm a UT fan, and you know what? Being a UT fan's good because it gets you used to being disappointed. It gets you used to being disappointed. And yes, I said it, but I'm not taking it back. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a UT fan. You better believe how to preach. Uh, uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, what comes out of your mouth yeah. is what's taking place yeah. and what you're thinking about in your heart. Yeah. And if you're talking about pornography, if you're talking about sports, yeah. you're talking about uh, entertainment, if you're talking about Hollywood, yeah. well, obviously those things are important to you and you're interested in them yeah. because you talk about them all the time. That is a revelation of your heart, whether you realize that or not, you see. Yeah. And so uh, I read several years ago, I didn't share this in the prayer room service uh, because we're a little bit limited on time. But the fact of the matter is, uh, 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 the devil moves in a subtle way. Yep. He doesn't come at you with both barrels aimed at you, right. shooting and hollering and hooting around. Yeah. He deceived Eve through his subtlety. And uh, the, beloved, the devil still uses subtlety today. Sure. And the Word of God tells yeah. us that we are not to be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Amen. And in Sunday school a few years ago, I talked about the dirty dozen. Uh, Twelve devices that the devil uses to deceive a believer. Uh, beloved, one of those things obviously is carnality, sensuality, pornography, if you will. And I read uh, uh, this group of people did a study in regard to men and women who were addicted uh, to, to porn pornography and pornographic images. And I find it very interesting as they was going through and listen to these, these people, uh, these people were people that you would not even think would not even think have that type of problem. They were in a good environment. They had good surroundings. And like, how is it from your background and your history and where you came from, how on earth did you get exposed to pornography and get addicted to it? And finally, there was a revelation made which I thought was very interesting. I don't know how many people in here take the paper. I guess the paper still is in circulation. We get one every Wednesday in our house. Lord, I hope we ain't getting charged for that because I'm not paying for it. Uh, I didn't ask for the paper and everything. But somebody sticks a Citizen Tribune in our post, uh, or in a post in our mailbox every week or about every week we do that. Well, I enjoy the sale ads. I enjoy that and everything. But anyway, they realized that the one common thing that all these people were getting was a newspaper. And in those newspaper ads, like Belk, Kmart, JCPenney, these individuals were exposed to pornographic images through the advertisements of lingerie in those newspapers. They didn't subscribe to Playboy. They didn't subscribe to Hustler. They looked at these women that were modeling bras and underwear in the local newspaper. And it's through those advertisements yeah. is how these people picked up and developed an addiction for pornography. Subtle, right? Yeah, subtle is exactly right. And that's exactly how the devil approaches you and I as children of God. Yeah. You see somebody come at you with waving an ax or a gun, that's going to get your attention real quick. Right. But if you see somebody that waves at you and smiles, you're going to let your guard down and entertain a conversation with them. And so anyway, uh, beloved, uh, I just thought that was interesting yeah, that is. the devil used ads, yeah. lingerie ads, to get people hooked on pornography. Like that, yeah. And so, beloved, that's why it's important. We need to guard our heart. Yeah. need to take everything serious. Amen. Because you don't know what the devil's doing. That's right. You don't know what the devil's doing. Yes, that's exactly. Right. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have you heard before the word of the truth of the gospel, which is coming to you as it is in all the world. And this is what the gospel message does. And bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God and truth. 
And so since the day that they got saved, they heard the gospel message. The God, God has been given the increase. And there's been fruit in the churches and been fruit in the believers' lives in these churches. And beloved, that's what the gospel is intended to do is to point someone to their need of Christ. They get saved. They witness to others. They tell them what Jesus has done for them. They get saved. And it brings forth fruit, you see. And so, beloved, we certainly have a powerful amen. message to give to this dark and dying world. Yes, amen. And here we see the deliverance that God's Word brings to people. Yeah. In the book of James chapter 1, verse 21, the Word of God tells us, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted Word, which is able to save your souls. Uh, beloved, the deliverance that's in the gospel message of Jesus Christ. You know, the hardest thing to do sometimes, Brother Mike, when you're witnessing to people is to get them lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. They need to realize right. their need for Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, right. Everybody thinks they're okay. Yeah. Everything, Everybody thinks everything's all right. And beloved, sometimes what you got to do is tell people their need of Jesus Christ yeah. and show to them what God has to say about their soul to get them in a lost condition before they'll ever get saved. And, and the fact of the matter is, God has already declared all have sinned that come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. We all come from the same dirt pile. We all need, we all need deliverance. We all need salvation. And the only one that can save us is Jesus Christ. And so, beloved, uh, the deliverance that's in God's Word. I've had people say, well, preacher, I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Praise God for that testimony. I wish I could say that. I can't. Preacher, I've never stolen anything. I appreciate that testimony. I wish I could say that I've never stolen, but I have. I remember my mom took me to J.C. Penney when I was about five or six years old, and there was a button on the toy shelf. A button. Come off a cloth like this right here. A button. Well, that button didn't belong to me. But I liked that button for whatever reason. And so when mom got done shopping, I picked that button up and took it with me. And when I done that, I knew it was wrong. But who's going to miss that button, right? And so mom, when we got home, where'd you get that button? And what you doing with that? What'd you take that off of? I said, it was sitting on the shelf at the store. You thief, you're going to go to hell over that. And, uh, scared me to death. Said, well, let's get back in the car. I don't, I don't know what I said. Maybe we need to get back in the car, take that button back. I think she took it and threw it away. Threw it away. But the fact of the matter is, uh, beloved, the fact of the matter is, God's word is able to deliver us and show us our need for Jesus Christ. And beloved, all have sinned that comes short of the glory of God. You can say you've never drank. You can say you've never stolen. You can say you've never done this, never done that. The fact of the matter is, you have inherited a sin nature exactly right. from your earthly father, yeah. Adam. Amen. You've received that earthly nature. Yeah. It is sinful. Amen. It is corrupt. And irregardless of what you believe or think about yourself, you are a sinner and God's judgment abides upon you and you need salvation. You need to be born again. Amen. Amen. And so 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. Yeah. And that from a child has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Again, hearing the gospel message about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, hearing the Word of God, it provides deliverance to the sinner. It is just that simple. And notice here, Timothy was taught at a young age. And beloved, America has already lost a generation, if not two, you, because we've not shared the gospel message to our youth. Yes, uh, beloved, in the Old Testament, the Israelites were warned and also commanded to write the law, to post it on the doors, 
to post it on the gates, everywhere in their house, to post the Word of God. And they were commanded to teach that to their children and their children's children and tell them how God delivered them out of their bondage in Egypt. And it was passed on from generation to generation. And I hear it said today, in America, we're going to lose our youth if we don't share the gospel message with Jesus Christ. Friend, we've already lost two generations. Uh, that's being optimistic. But I believe we've lost two generations already and working on the third. And so, beloved, there's been times I've went through the drive-thru and I've handed young boys and girls a gospel track and they look at me What's this for? You know, I've never heard of Jesus Christ. And we live in the, and I put this in quotation marks, we live in the so-called Bible Belt. We live in an area uh, where people love the Lord. And yet we've got children today that have never heard the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Don't know who Jesus is. If that's not a generation lost, I don't know what is. And you say, well, preacher, you're basing that up on one individual or the individuals you encounter. Well, I can assure you that if they say that, there's others that also believe that way. That's right. They've never heard the gospel message. True. And so, beloved, we certainly need to share others with others what God has done for us and share the gospel message. Amen. In Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 17, yeah. very familiar portion of Scripture, for whosoever one of my favorite verses in the Bible. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's why the word of God says judgment must first begin at the house of God. Uh, beloved, uh, you can get saved at home. You can get saved at work. You can get saved in the church. Uh, God's hand is not shortened that He cannot reach. Amen. He'll Amen. save you anywhere right. and everywhere. Amen. But beloved, when you bring somebody to a Bible-believing church Amen. that shares the gospel message, yeah. let me tell you something. It's going to bring around pricks of conviction upon yeah. their heart. Right. Uh, and, the and they're going to have to deal yeah. with their soul. You go to some of these other churches that don't preach the gospel, uh, it's just entertainment. Right. It's just a social event. And they have a word of prayer. A prayer. Then they have the praise time. And the preacher says, thank you for being here. God loves you and sends you home. And doesn't talk to you about your sin nature. Let me tell you something. You're doing those people a disservice. The Bible says to speak the truth and speak it in love. Yeah. We're not to be condescending, judgmental, if you will. But bless God, we need to tell people the truth in love. Yeah. In love. And so, uh, uh, beloved, uh, uh, we certainly need to share the gospel message. And we need to invite people to come in and hear the gospel message. Don't invite them to come hear Chris Hazelwood. Yeah. Don't do that. They'll be disappointed. Don't do that. But invite people to come hear the Word of God. Amen. Hear what God has to say. Amen. And beloved, I've been called to preach. I simply am a messenger. I'm simply a messenger to convey the gospel message to other people. And so, notice here, and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good joy. Let me tell you something. You want to see something pretty? You want to see something pretty? Look at that. Is that not what I just read? How beautiful are the feet of them. Hey, ain't that a pretty sight? See, you tell me what Jerry's got pretty feet. Hey, Amen. No, we're not going to have a foot washing service. But they all have not obeyed the gospel. For as I saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And then this verse everybody knows. I quote it quite often when I'm preaching. And this is referring to salvation. Hearing God's word does increase our faith as believers. But in a proper context tonight, to rightly divide the word, this next verse has to deal with salvation. So then faith 
cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. That is deliverance, my friend. Yeah. The Word of God brings about deliverance. God's Word is decisive. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12, for the Word of God is quick. Now, I know I speak fast, but that's not what it means here. The word quick means living. It is a living word. It is a powerful word. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, beloved, you can fool me and you can fool your spouse with the intents of your heart. But there's one person you can't fool, that's right. and that's God. Amen. And beloved, His Word will help us discern not only our own heart, but the hearts of other people. You see? Yeah. And so, uh, beloved, the deliverance, the decisiveness, and how about the delight that we have in God's Word as God's children? Uh, beloved, I enjoy reading this book. Amen. I enjoy Very reading the Word of God. Amen. I know by the world's standards to a lot of churches, a lot of people, uh, they wouldn't give me time of day. Nice. I've never been to Crown College. I've never been to seminary. Nice. I've not been to school. Uh, but beloved, God has called me. Yeah. And beloved, what I've learned is faithful men teaching faithful men. Amen. And I've received those truths. I've studied the Word. I've tried to rightly uh, discern God's Word. And so, some won't look at you unless you've got a degree from an institution. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, you can have your piece of paper and put it on a wall and be proud of it, but I'd much rather be around a man of God who's experienced the forgiveness of God, the salvation of God, and he's lived for the Lord. He's lived a rough life. God's taught him through experience and circumstances, and the Holy Spirit of God is all over that man. Amen. Amen. I'd much rather be under that yes. than somebody that's got a degree yeah. that comes up and preaches robotically, if you will. Now listen, I'm not against Christian education. Bless. Don't misconstrue what I just said. If God's called you, if God's called you to go to seminary, called you to go to college, I'm all for that. Bless. Just be sure God's in it. Amen. I remember working with a gentleman about it's about 2008, 2009. We were working, and he didn't work in the store that I worked at. He was a, a field specialist, and we were putting in a vending machine for PPE products at this factory, and his job was to help set those machines up. Well, it was my customer, so I had to be on site to help him set it up to learn about the machine. And so I wasn't even pastor here at this time. And uh, we got to talking about the Lord. And uh, he said, yeah, I'm a student down at Crown, Crown College. And God bless his soul, Brother Clarence Sexton. Have the utmost respect for that man. I love Brother Clarence. His faith is real now. He's with the Lord. Uh, but he went to Crown College. And uh, he said, yeah, when I get out of college, he said, I hope to find a church and become a pastor. And I said, well, I said, uh, God's call." I said, I believe that's the highest call that God can give you. Here was his response. The reason I'm a preacher is because my granddaddy and daddy was a preacher. And I thought I'd keep up the family tradition. That's sad. Yeah, there's something missing there. Yep. Where's the hand of God, the call of God? Amen. You know. And I said, buddy, I said, I appreciate you being like Hank Williams Jr. carrying on the family tradition. But you better check out your reason for going to college. Because it don't sound to me like God's in it. Yeah. And he said, oh yeah, God's in this and everything. And, well, I didn't want you to say it. And so anyway, that's between him and the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, but beloved, uh, I certainly delight in God's Word. I enjoy reading the Scriptures. I enjoy studying the Scriptures. And beloved, as the psalmist David wrote, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. I remember as a young teenage boy, my first job, technically my, depends on how you want to look at this. I had a job working at a fruit stand 
And basically, I worked there one day to unload the watermelon truck. And after that day was over with, they give me five dollars in a watermelon. I think it was uh, after unloading. Uh, and I'm talking. I ain't talking about a pickup truck. I'm talking about an eighteen wheeler truck unloading watermelon all day. And so that was my I guess. My second job, my first job was mowing yards. That was my second job. My third job was working at Wendy's. That only lasted about two weeks. I'm really good about eating hamburgers, but bless God, you don't want me fixing the table for you. And, uh, you don't want that. And so after two weeks, I was only getting only getting about 10 hours a week. I went to the grocery store, put in an application. Some of y'all may remember Win dixie being here. So anyway, I got a job working there at Win dixie and so I met this, uh, met this good friend of mine. Matter of fact, we've been praying for his family. He lost his dad about three weeks ago. And I don't know if, I don't know if teenagers still do this now or not. But the big thing for us teenagers in Allen County is on Friday and Saturday night, you go cruise Andrew Johnson Highway. Yep. You cut through Gaddy's. You cut through McDonald's. You go down past Family Church. And you come back and go by the putt putt place. <laughs> and go through Shoney's, and you would do this. I'd burn out a full tank of gas just riding around doing that. And so, anyway, uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, beloved, uh, you sit down and we, we do all these things, and you, and, and you delight in them, but at the end of the day, what did that do for eternity, if you will? Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And notice here, in delighting of God's Word, the Word of God tells us in Psalm chapter 19, verse number 8, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Uh, beloved, aren't you thankful that God tells us the truth and nothing but the truth? So help us God. Amen. His Word is absolute truth. Yes, indeed. You know, I know some people, they won't lie to you. But they won't tell you all the truth either. Amen. There's guile and there's deceit in there. Yes. And they'll just tell you what they want you to know. God doesn't do that. Right. He gives us the totality of the truth. Amen. Yes. And so I rejoice and delight when I read God's word because I know what he's saying is true. And I know it's for my benefit. Amen. It is for my benefit. Amen. It's for your benefit. Yes. Psalm 119 verse 92 tells us, Unless thy law had been my delights, I should have then perished in my affliction. Unless thy law had been my delights. I shared that story about cruising. And I shared it with this attempt. This, this friend of mine, he had a 66 Mustang. Man, that thing would rock and roll. And I love racing. And when I was driving, I'd pull up beside somebody at the red light. Roll! Roll! <laughs> I don't have to dash. You ain't gonna get me. And boy, that light would turn green and we'd take off. I remember one night, never will forget it. Me and my friend was together and another one of her co-workers. I had a Dodge Turismo or Plymouth Turismo. Biggest piece of junk was ever created. <laughs> Little four-cylinder car. I could outrun that car on my 10 speed. <laughs> well, it had a 2.2 four-cylinder in it. My friend had a Dodge Omni 024. It only had a 1.8 cylinder in it. But mine was an automatic. His was a four, four speed. We're talking two compatible cars here. Two compatible cars. We're at the red light where, what's that restaurant where I know y'all work? Hostons. Hostons. We was at the red light at Hostons. Well, we were sitting there. It was 1130 at night. He pulled up beside me at that red light. Terry was sitting in the passenger seat. Kevin was over, grinning. He looked over and grinned at me. He put his car in neutral. Wrong, wrong. I said, you just didn't do that. I patted my car on the dash. I revved up the engine. And man, when that light turned green, two four-cylinders took off down Andrew Johnson Island. <laughs> Well, believe it or not, believe it or not, when we got past McDonald's, we had garnered some people's attention. 
namely the Marstown Police Department. <laughs> and it was obvious that we were speeding. And so uh, when I saw the police car turn out, and by the way, I was winning by half a car length. I'm not letting Kevin forget that. I was ahead by half a car length when I got out of the throttle. He kept it, he kept it on the floor. He took on down the highway. Well, police officer passed me to go get him. I said, Phew. well, I'm glad I didn't get caught. Oh, let me tell you something. Kevin pulled over in Sable Lots parking lot and six more police cars pulled me over in the parking lot. It looked like the biggest drug raid in Hamlin County. And the officer come up and said, what was you doing that you're in such a hurry, son? And I said, officer, I said, I said I'm not going to lie to you because we were caught. I said, me and my buddy were just out having a little fun. And I said, we, we were racing. He said, well, he said, I want you to know I caught you doing 87 miles an hour in a 40 zone. And he said, that's against the law. And he said, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do some things. And so he went back with my friend Terry. Thank God for him. Instead of charging us with reckless driving, he charged us with both of us with a speed ticket. And I'll just be honest with you, that was one ticket I'm glad I got. I didn't think that car would do it, love, <laughs> He called me there. I was proud of that. I was proud of that. Yeah. I didn't think I would go that fast. What <laughs> well, that's got to do with this message, I have no idea. I just shot that rabbit. Amen. <laughs> Delighting in God's word. Amen. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 174 tells us I have longed for thy salvation. O Lord, and the law is my delight. And in uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And so, beloved, as believers, we ought to delight in the word of God yeah. for the truth that it gives, for the hope that it gives, yeah. for the peace that it gives. That's what God's word will do for us. Amen. Believers. The discernment of God's word. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 tells us, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. The Word of God is proper for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof. God tells us what's wrong with us. For correction, God tells us how to get right and how to stay right, and for instruction and in righteousness, how to live to glorify His name. Amen. So, and when Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of His mouth. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. It's a living Word that we all need as children of God. Amen. The importance of of God's Word <coughs> and the desire to have God's Word. Uh, I'm telling you about my friend uh, had that 66 Mustang. I said all that. This is what I was trying to get to. When we first met, we first started riding around, he had these Bible verses placed upon his dash. And I looked at them and I realized that they were Bible verses, but I didn't know what they meant. And he had those verses put on the dash of his vehicle about drinking and about tempting God as a reminder to him to be safe Amen. when he was behind the wheel and was driving, not to give in to temptation. Amen. And I told him, I said, I, I, that made an impression on me when I was 16, 17 years old that somebody would put the Word of God in eyes view of their vehicle Son. to remind them how they're supposed to drive when they get on the highway. I thought that was commendable. Amen. And I have the utmost respect for him. And I appreciated him doing that. And I told him whether he realized or not, God used those Bible verses on that dash to speak to my heart. Amen. God's Word. Amen. Amen. God's Word. The desire to have God's Word. Uh, beloved, uh, people when they get saved, Old things are passed away, but old things are coming new. 
But one of the birthmarks of the believer, I truly believe, is what is your desire hmm. and your attitude toward God's Word and the house of God. Because let me tell you something. If you get saved, you're going to have a desire to be at God's house. Yeah. You're going to have a desire to be around God's people. Yeah. And you're going to have a desire to know more about your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you don't have any of those desires, I wonder what took place in your heart. You need to get in your prayer closet. As I mentioned to somebody this past week, you need to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because there's something not right there. I don't want to go down out of church and be around a bunch of hypocrites. Well, bless God, if you're a UT fan, I don't know, I don't know how much more of a hypocrite you can be around. Because when they win, praise God, hallelujah. But the second they lose, man, fire him and get rid of him and get somebody else in here. Now, if that's not being a hypocrite, I don't know what is. And so, anyway, the Bible tells us in regard to desiring to hear the word of God. First Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and enemies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. <coughs> A newborn babe, when he's hungry, he does what? He cries. Yep. I'm hungry. When a baby cries, one of three things. They're hungry. They've done peed and pooped. Hey, you need to come change my diaper. Or they're hurting somewhere. Yep. But they have a desire for that milk. Yep. And brother, when a person gets saved, you ought to have a desire for the things of God. Because the scriptures are making that analogy, that comparison. You see. And then last of all, the doing of God's Word. The doing of God's Word. James chapter 1, verse number 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and that's the Word of God. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If you want God's blessings in your life, you read God's word, yeah. then don't only be a hearer of God's word, but you be a doer of God's word, yeah. you can guarantee it. God's going to bless that in your life. Amen. He said he would. He'll bless that. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And that basically just reiterating James 1.8 that I just read to you. Read God's word. Hide it in your heart. God's going to bless you for that. Amen. And so the things that the word of God can do for the believer. I'll tell you what. It's a lot of things, is it not? Yes. A lot of things. Deliverance, decisiveness, delight, discernment, desire, and then doing. Amen? Amen. Well, that's all I have for us tonight. I've still got a green light. I could preach longer, but I'm going to stop before this next round of batteries goes dead. Amen.